my computer just, you know. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now it's uh, Advent, so first week of okay. Advent. So we will have a short prayer of the Advent prayer. Before we start the before we start the webinar, we will pray first. Okay. Let's start the prayer. Lord God, we adore you because you have come to us in the past. You have spoken to us in the law of Israel. You have challenged us in the words of the prophets. You have shown us in Jesus what you are, what you are really like. Lord God, we adore you because you still come to us now. You come to us through other people and their love and concern for us. You come to us through men and women who need our help. You come to us as we worship you with your people. Lord God, we adore you because you will come to us at the end. You will be with us at the hour of our death. You will still reign supreme when all human institutions fail. You will still be God when our history has run its course. We welcome you, the God who comes. Come to us now in the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon again. Welcome our dear dog Mikes. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. Let's start. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this afternoon, we're going to talk about dealing with bloating, diarrhea, and constipation using a TCM perspective. I'm Dr. Marika Biag. I graduated as a doctor of medicine from the University of Santo Tomas. I'm actually an anesthesiologist, and I'm also a graduate of the first batch of acupuncture in SMIC, Institute of Traditional Chinese Medicine. I have a special interest in nutrition, so if you've been here for a while, you'll know that I also gave a few lectures a while back about nutrition. I set up my Instagram page, Cusina Ni Marika, and also on Facebook, and I'm currently studying to be a holistic nutrition coach at the Academy of Healing Nutrition. So when we think about di digestion, in the Western sense, the organs involved in the processing of food are outright from the mouth to your anus, okay? So you digest, you chew things in the mouth, and then you swallow them, your stomach um, digest it, and then all the fecal matter, all the waste go out through your anus. However, when you think about it in a Chinese medicine perspective, there's a little bit of symbolic meaning also in the organs. It's practically the same organs as you see in the picture in the right. They're also named the same way, but they also have other symbolic functions that are not associated with the Western organs that we are familiar with. So for example, we usually think of the body as a cooking pot. And if you see in the middle, the main organs for digestion are actually your spleen and your stomach. So the stomach is like a cauldron that wherein the food goes to be digested. And the spleen transforms the food into the pure chi component and separates it from the impure component that goes to your intestines. So let's go through the process of digestion in TCM one by one. The stomach is called, usually called the granary. This is where you store your food. It goes inside the stomach and it is in the stomach that digestion happens in the sense that the food is ground. Sorry about that. The food is ground or broken down into pure 
or useful components and impure or waste components. Think of it as a rice meal. Remember that in a rice meal, you separate the grain from the chaff. So this is what happens in the stomach in the TCM perspective. Next organ, we have the spleen. After the stomach separates the grain from the chaff, the spleen transforms the food into chi, blood, and fluids. <coughs> Quiet. Okay. The next organs that are involved are the small intestine, which continues to break down food started by the stomach and gives whatever useful material there is back to the spleen. So it's like this recycling bin in the picture wherein you save the useful stuff and then you dump the waste. The waste gets dumped into the large intestine and like this um, garbage truck, it's the one that receives the waste and brings it out of the body via your feces. There's another organ that has a special role in digestion. It's your liver. Among the organs, the liver is considered the general. It's because it commands the chi. It regulates the smooth movement of chi, like a commander or a general commands its troops. And it ensures that there's a smooth flow of chi in the highways of your body. These are called your channels. There's, these are the ones wherein we insert needles in your body. If you've ever had acupuncture before, it's the channels for the chi flows. So it, the liver organ ensures that there's a smooth flow of chi in your channels. And because of, of the smooth flow of chi, it also ensures a smooth flow of digestion in your body. It also stores the blood and the blood nourishes the organs. So if, if there's not enough blood stored in the liver, digestion, digestion may be impaired. It also secretes bile that aids in digestion, and it has a special relationship with your spleen. These organs are in a restrictive relationship. The wood or liver restricts the spleen or the earth. Okay? So let's go over it once again. You eat your food, your stomach, which is the granary, digests the food by separating the grain from the chaff, and then the spleen transforms the food into chi, blood, and fluids. The small intestine is like your recycling bin. It throws back the useful material back to the spleen for more use to transform again to chi, blood, and fluids. And throws out the waste into the large intestine, which acts like your trash, trash truck, uh, garbage truck, and brings out your fecaloid matter. The liver, the general, ensures there's a smooth flow of chi in your body and a smooth flow of your digestion. Okay, so how do we treat problems in digestion, and probably problems in the passage of stool. In Chinese medicine, you have the yin and yang principles. Yin and yang are opposites, and the yin and the yang counterbalance each other. For example, cool foods balance the heat in your body, and warming foods dispel any pathogenic cold. We also have the principle of five elements, and just like having the perfect balance of yin and yang, we must also try to find the balance among the five elements. If you see here, your organ for digestion spleen is associated with the color yellow, the flavor sweet, and the element of the earth. The large intestine is associated with the lungs, with the color white, with the flavor acrid or pungent, and the element of metal. The small intestine is related to your heart, color red, flavor bitter, element fire. And the special organ, which is the liver, is associated with the color green, the flavor sour, and the element of wood. Okay, you can use these principles in Chinese food color therapy. For example, if you want to nourish your digestive organs, if you have weak digestion, you can eat the colors yellow, 
because they're associated with your spleen, your organ of digestion. For example, you have corn, pineapple, yellow pepper, and banana. If there's a problem in the smooth flow of your digestion, you may also eat liver-enhancing foods that are green, your leafy vegetables, for example, or seaweeds. If it's in the large intestines, it's associated with your lungs, so white-colored foods are appropriate. And sometimes in the small intestines, associated with the color red because of the heart, you can eat red-colored food. They're also associated with the five flavors. The flavor sweet is associated with the digestive organ, the spleen. Um, please don't think of this, this as desserts, as sweets. It's the flavor of your food. For example, sweet potatoes, squash, corn, these are inherently sweet. Now, if you want to deal with the liver, you deal with it using the sour flavor like the lemon and most fruits. And for the large intestine that's associated with your lung, you eat spicy food. For the small intestine, you have the heart and you have the bitter flavor. Okay, so this is just an elaboration. The next two slides are an elaboration about how the flavors can enhance your digestion or affect your digestion. So for the sour flavor, it can calm the body. The bitter flavor can clear heat. Sweet flavor can tonify or nourish the body. The spicy flavor can expel cold from the body. And the salty flavor can help with the body to dissolve stagnation. Right. How do we apply these principles? For example, sweet foods are very nourishing and they have moistening properties. These are good to eat if you have constipation and dryness in your body. Sour foods can be very drying and promote contraction. So if you have soft stools, you can remove excess fluid by having sour foods. Hot or pungent foods are have, have very warming properties and actually stimulate the appetite and promote the circulation of blood and qi throughout the body. Bitter foods have a very cooling effect and dry up the dampness. You can also use bitter foods when the liver is sluggish to wake it up. Salty foods are very lubricating. They absorb water and aid in the removal of accumulated wastes. Let's tackle first bloating. Are you all still there? Sorry, can somebody tell me if I've been disconnected? No, you are good. Okay, thank you, sister. So let's tackle first bloating. This happens when the abdomen feels full and tight. So your question is, is the stomach full? Is the food not moving out of your stomach? Is there too much gas in your stomach? Some common causes of bloating include cold. Cold in the stomach happens when you've eat, been eating a lot of raw food. If you've been eating a lot of cold food, for example, iced beverages, shakes. If your environment is really cold, it can actually affect even your digestion. If you've been overeating, this can also result into heat. It is another cause of blo bloating, especially if your food is rich greasy, and spicy, or if you've been drinking alcoholic beverages. Your mood can also affect your digestion. Have you been worried a lot? Are you thinking too much? These are the, organ these are the emotions that are associated with your spleen organ. I have a previous lecture about this. You can watch it on the YouTube channel of SMIC. Too much, thinking too much, your spleen is actually probably stressed too. Your spleen may be weakened because of worrying too much. And if you have been irritable or angry recent, recently, that is your organ, the liver, associated with irritability, anger, and stress. So these organs of digestion may be affected by your mood. Okay, so I actually have another lecture for this, it's already uploaded in the YouTube channel of SMIC. You may go back to that. 
Also, if you have been overworking recently, if you haven't been sleeping well, if you have a prolonged disease that has weakened your health and constitution, you may have overexhaustion. So how do we deal with this? For the cold, you disperse the cold and warm your yang using warming herbs. To resolve accumulation, eat only until 70% full or probably eat foods that are easier to digest, just such as your rice or congee and soups. To smooth the liver constraint and resolve constraint, you should calm the mind and strengthen your spleen. If you are overexhausted, you should nourish the organs of the spleen and the stomach. Look at your lifestyle. Are you lacking sleep? Are you overworking yourself? Focus also on nourishing the kidneys. Avoid acti activities that deplete your energy or your chi and avoid extremes in the environment heat, cold, or even exercising too much. Am I still connected? Yes, very good. Okay. So he's, here are some teas and herbs for bloating. The dried citrus peel can promote digestion. Hawthorn berry, Sister Michelle, um, SMIC used to sell this as a jam in SMIC. And hawthorn berry is good to have, especially if you have had a very rich meal. It strengthens your spleen and aids in digestion, among other things. You can have warming herbs to improve your digestion. Add this into your dishes or your meals. Clove, ginger, cinnamon, fennel, black pepper. These are some of the... Also, to warm your body, you can have ginger or salt moxibustion on REN8. That's just above, that's just your umbilicus. You can also use a moxa stick to warm REN12, stomach 25. These are all in the abdomen. And then stomach 36, it's the one in the picture, and spleen 6. These are all points in acupuncture that you can apply acupressure on, or you can use your moxibustion stick to warm them up. For acupressure, pressure, you can use large intestine 4. It's in the picture. And pericardium 6. Pericardium 6 is especially good if you feel nauseous or bloated or if you feel like there's regurgitation of food or moving of the food upwards. You can also use cupping once or twice a day for pathogenic cold or food accumulation. You can use the points REN12, REN4, and REN6. These are all in the abdomen and bladder 20 or bladder 21 in the lower back. You can also use ear seeds. Here in the picture, you can use it as a map to check where to put your ear seed points. You can choose four or five points from stomach, small intestine, large intestine, spleen, liver, shenman, and sympathetic. To calm your mind and also to improve the flow of your chi in the body, you can do qigong or breathing exercises. Next, we'll talk about diarrhea. Diarrhea happens when you have increased bowel movements, loose stools, or liquid fecal discharge. It can be acute or chronic, and when it is acute, it is more likely to be caused by excess. It can be an excess in heat or an excess in cold. Excess in heat can present with blood in the stools. If it is an excess in cold, it may be because you've been ingesting a lot of cold, raw, or unclean food. If your liver is over-controlling your spleen, as I mentioned a while ago, their relationship is about control. But sometimes, if the liver over-restrains your spleen, it cannot function properly. And you, there is a disturbance in the movement of chi in the stomach and intestinal dysfunction for transformation, transportation of your fecaloid material. Of course, if you, can, if you accumulate any dampness in the body, dampness can also present as diarrhea. If it is chronic diarrhea, it is most likely a case of deficiency. 
It can be a deficiency in your spleen and your stomach. It can be chi deficiency from another illness. Or you can have kidney yang deficiency in which the Ming Min fire fails to warm the spleen. And if this happens, your spleen weakens and cold and damp accumulates. And again, there is diarrhea. These are the old organs involved and treatment principles include the following. Warming to resolve the cold damp. Clearing and resolving damp heat. Regulating your stomach and intestines. Fortifying your spleen. Smoothing the liver and warming your kidneys. Okay, for diarrhea, you can use bitter foods to dry up the dampness and when the liver function is also sluggish. You can also use sour foods to promote contraction and remove excess fluid from soft stools. Here is an example of a diarrhea diet. Usually, digestion is weak, so you should eat food that is easy to digest, such as your congee or rice meal. You can also eat food that will strengthen your spleen and stomach. The color for the spleen and the stomach is yellow, so eat a lot of yellow foods. Avoid food that will damage your spleen, such as raw cold foods, ice cold drinks, dairy, sugar, or fried foods. For chronic diarrhea, in the picture, you have lotus seeds. Lotus seeds are good to stop diarrhea, especially chronic diarrhea. Again, for warming, you can use ginger moxibustion on your umbilicus, REN8. Again, warming, REN12, stomach 25, stomach 36, and spleen 6 using a moxibustion stick. You can also do a massage. For this particular abdominal massage, to relieve diarrhea, you do it in a counterclockwise manner. If it's due to cold syndrome and chronic diarrhea, you can also do copying on the same points that I mentioned a while ago. If there is abdominal pain, large intestine 4 is very good for pain in the body. Acupressure can also be done on these points in addition to the points that I mentioned a while ago. Spleen 16, REN 6, liver 2, stomach 36, and spleen 4. Ear seeds can also be used. Again, choose 4 or 5. Choose between stomach, small intestine, large intestine, spleen, kidney, liver, and shenmen. Next, let's move to constipation. Am I still connected? Yes. Okay. Thank you for confirming. Uh, for constipation, it said that there is a difficulty in defecation and the production of dry and impacted stools. So for this case, the normal bowel movement is usually up to two days, and it is smooth. Okay, regular bowel movement that is smooth and maybe up to two days interval. Now, if you have difficulty in defecation, even if your bowel movement is regular or every day, it is still considered as constipation. You can have an excess type if your, your constitution is young and you, become, you eat a lot of spicy food, your constitution can have yang exuberance. So there's a lot of heat in your body. You're, also, you're already very hot in your constitution by nature and you also eat a lot of spicy and greasy, greasy foods. It can lead to an accumulation of heat in the stomach and intestines and you can have obstructed defecation. If you have internal pathogenic heat, meaning that you have heat in your body, probably due to other causes, the heat can damage the body fluids and give rise to dryness of the intestines. There are some emotional factors, such as moodiness. So mood is very important in your digestion. This moodiness can cause qi stagnation, which blocks fluid dispersion and dysfunction in intestinal obstruction. Okay? For the deficiency type, you can have qi and blood deficiency. When there is insufficiency in qi and blood, your intestines or digestion simply does not move properly. 
Okay. Also, if there's poor chi flow, um, uh, there's poor blood flow. The body, the but your digestion is not moistened enough. So there is also again dryness in your intestines. If there is an insufficiency of yang chi, yang is about movement. So if there is an insufficiency of energy that tries to make your intestines move, then bowel movement does not happen. Okay? So how do you treat it? You treat it by treating the cause. If there is an excess of heat, you clear the heat to preserve the fluids. You can also moisten the intestine to relieve constipation. If it is due to an excess of uh, an excess of emotion, abnormal emotion or mood, you suit the liver to rectify the chi. You, all of these free and promote bowel chi to relieve, relieve constipation. For deficiency, you reinforce your organs, especially your kidneys. You boost the yang to boost movement and relax the bowels. And you also nourish the blood and boost the chi to relax the bowels. Again, if you are constipation, constipated, you can have sweet foods because sweet foods nourish your body and have very moistening properties. You can also have salty foods like seaweed and prawns because these are lubricating and aid the removal of accumulated wastes. For warming, you can have pungent foods which enhance the circulation of blood and chi in your body. Okay, Bitter foods, if there is dampness or perhaps if your liver function is sluggish, you can also have bitter foods. But please avoid sour foods because sour foods are drying and this can aggravate your constipation. Okay. Food remedies for constipation can include your monk fruit. Monk fruit is lubricating. It's sweet. It's also nourishing. A laxative that you can have is biota seed porridge. You can also nourish your spleen and your stomach, again, by yellow foods, eating yellow foods. You can also eat green foods that nourish your liver. Liver promotes the smooth flow of the chi. And again, seaweeds because they are salty. If you want to include more yang or warmth in your body, you can do ginger moxibustion on your abdomen, moxibustion stick on stomach 25, stomach 28, spleen 15, and spleen 14. These are all in the abdomen. You can also do a stomach massage. This time, you do it in a clockwise direction following the movement of your organs. Clockwise for constipation, counterclockwise for diarrhea. Here are some suggested acupressure points. Sugo and Susan Lee. For ear seeds, you can actually choose again four to five points, including the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, spleen, kidney, liver, sanjiao, abdomen, rectum, and for your mood, use the shenmen. That's all for this afternoon. Thank you.